Ray, final thoughts? Thank you again for coming. Yeah, I remember reading Howl for the very first time when I was a sophomore. Uh, you want to so say what year that was? That was a long, well, that was in the 60s. And uh, my professor, I think, was quite bold, probably, to actually assign it back then. And it I was remember. At Berkeley or San Francisco State? Um, I actually transferred to Berkeley from San Diego State, San and Diego it was State. back at in San Diego. Mm. And um, I was really taken by the rhythm of it, which I'm just going to read one line from Oh, it. nice. Okay. Maybe two or three. Who poverty and tatters and hollow-eyed and high sat up smoking in the supernatural darkness of cold water flats. There's just, it's very propulsive, it's very emphatic, a lot of those words I've no I notice has have stress on the first syllable, poverty, tatters, hollow, um, and he does that a lot. And it's not enough. It's not not regularly enough to be a traditional meter like trochees, but there are a lot of trochees in it. If you you know once you learn that terminology, you recognize them. But I just responded. You could all instinctively you could almost dance to it and I think that that meant that I was going to be a poet the fact that I responded not so much I mean I responded to what it was saying it's sort of liberating message but at a base basic level I responded to the rhythm that's really cool I'm so <laughs> glad that the invitation for you to come here coincided with the beat so that you could say that about Ginsburg I mean back in 1999 we asked you to come and pick one poet who was your progenitor, you know, influ main influence, and you picked Dickinson, mm -hmm. and you did a great talk on Dickinson, which I think is in Mod Pop Plus somewhere, and now here you are all these years later also saying that Ginsburg is back there. That's really fantastic. <laughs>